Hey guys, in this video we're going to go over how you read standard form. Now this is important for your maths and it's important for your science. It's one of those lovely topics you get to study more than once. In this video I'm going to take you through three levels of examples and what I want you to be doing by the end of the video is pausing the video and racing you through to the answer. You can start this video wherever you like. So you can start with the easy questions or you can start with the hard questions. You can skip through faster if you find some of them too easy or you can go backwards and revise the earlier stuff if you're finding it too hard. And don't forget there is loads, loads more stuff for you to download on my website to help you with all of your revision. Here are the questions we are going to start with. Standard form can be used to write shorter versions of numbers when the actual numbers are really, really long and involve lots and lots of zeros, which can just be long and tedious to write out and can be confusing. So when we want to turn standard form into whole numbers, the first place we need to start is with the number before the multiplication signal, and that doesn't change. Now after this we're going to put some zeros and the number of zeros is told to us by the, the indice on the x to the 10. So here it's 2. So we start with an 8 which is before the multiplication symbol and then we see it's 10 to the power of 2 so we need to put two zeros next to it. So 8 times 10 to the 2 becomes 800. 8 times 10 to the 4 we keep the 8 the same. And then, because we have 10 to the 4, it's 10 to the power of 4, which tells us that after the 8, we need to put 4 zeros. 5 times 10 to the power of 5, we keep the 5 the same. Then looking at 10 to the power of 5, after that 5, we need to put 5 zeros. Slightly trickier ones now because we have 4 times 10 to the minus 3. This just means it's a number smaller than 0. So we're going to start over on the right hand side with our 4. Now instead of having our zeros after this, we need to have our zeros before our number. So we're going to put 3 zeros before our number and we need to put a decimal place in after that first zero. So it becomes 0 0.004. 7 times 10 to the minus 4. Again, starting over on the right hand side with our 7. And because it's minus 4, it's less than 0. And in front of that 7, we need to have four zeros. After that first zero, we need to put a decimal point. So 7 times 10 to the minus 4 becomes 0 0.0007. Some slightly harder questions now, because these involve decimal points. We have 1.4 times 10 to the 4. Now this 1 is the only number that's before the decimal point, so that stays as it is. And the point 4, which comes after the decimal point, is included into the 10 to the 4. So this time, instead of writing 10 zeros, we're going to write 10 numbers after the 1, and the first one is a 4. So 4, 0, 0, 0. So 1 times 10 to the 4 becomes 14,000. 8.72 times 10 to the 3. We keep the 8 the same. After the 8, we are going to have three other numbers. The first of them is a 7, and then a 2, and then our third number is going to be a 0. So 8.72 times 10 to the 3 becomes 8,720. Here is a bit more complicated, because after the 3, we just need two other numbers before a decimal point. So this is going to be 315 and then the point 23 will come after the decimal point. Some ones here that are below zero. We keep the four and put that on the right hand side and we have to the minus six. So in front of that we need to put six zeros. After the first zero, we need to put in a decimal point 
And we can't forget that seven and it needs to go at the end. The last one, that one needs to go on the right hand side and it is 10 to the minus three. So in front of that one, we need to put three zeros. And after the first zero, we need to put a decimal point. We can't forget about that seven and that six and they need to go after the one. The last set of questions here, and these are a bit trickier. We're going to start by turning them in to numbers. So we have 3.7 times 10 to the 3, 3, and then after that 3 comes 7 numbers, the first of all being a 7 and 2 zeros. Next, we're going to have 6.8 times 10 to the 5. So we start with a 6, and after that 6, we need to have 5 numbers. The first number being 8, and then making up the rest of those 5 numbers with zeros. So now we need to add these numbers together. 0, 0, 7, 3, 8, 6. Moving on to the next one, we have 7 times 10 to the 6, which means we're going to start with 7. There are going to be 6 digits after it, and the first of these extra digits is going to be a 9, and then making up the rest of those numbers are going to be zeros. 8.9 times 10 to the 2, so we can start with an 8, and then after that there are going to be 2 extra numbers, the first of which is going to be 9 followed by 0. We can then line them up and subtract one from another. If you struggle with long subtraction, then you can go and check out my separate video on that. Moving on to the next question. 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 4. So we know this number is going to be below 0. So starting writing from the right hand side, we need six, four zeros in front of that six, a decimal place after the first one. And we can't forget that second six. So our answer needs to be 0 0.00066. 7.6 times 10 to the minus six. Again, starting over on the right hand side with our seven. And in front of it, we need to be writing six zeros putting a decimal point after the first one. And if you can't forget that second six after the um, seven, that needs to go after the seven in the answer as well. We can then line those numbers up. Remember with these one, it's the decimal point that needs to be in line with each other. And then we can add those numbers together. Another one where we have numbers below zero. So 6.3 times 10 to the minus two, starting off with six on the right hand side. And before that six, we need to put two zeros. Decimal place after the first zero. And then after six, we need to put our three. So 6.3 times 10 to the minus two becomes 0.063. Two point three times ten to the minus four, starting off the right hand side with a two, and then four zeros in front of that, putting a decimal place after the first one, and then putting the three after the two. So two point three times ten to the minus four becomes zero point zero 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 two three. Then we need to subtract these numbers. Remember, when you're lining these up, because they are below zero, it needs to be the decimal point that are in line with each other. 2.2 times 10 to the 6. This is a large number. So we need to start over on the left-hand side. And after the 2, there need to be 6 other digits. Because it is 2.2, the first phase need to be 2, followed by 5 zeros. Six point five times ten to the minus five is a small number. Four 
So starting off over on the right hand side with your six and in front of that we need to have five zeros. After the first zero, we need to have a decimal point. And because it's 6.5 times 10 to the minus 5, after the 6 on the right-hand side, we need to have a 5. Then we can minus those numbers from each other. And this one's slightly more complicated because we have a number above 0 and a number below 0. Ouch. Mm, I'll be too crim.